In this video, we're taking a look at the latest NHL trade rumors, taking a look at a lot of the Nashville Predator players who are getting interest from teams like Toronto, Montreal, and apparently the Philadelphia Flyers as well. We also have some news from the waiver wire and a few signings to discuss. We'll jump into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, what a crazy wild day has been in, in NHL news today. Of course, if you missed the video earlier, uh, we saw a referee, longtime veteran ref, Tim Peel, was basically fired today. He will not ref another game in the NHL. He was scheduled to retire uh, here at the end of next month. It was his final season in the NHL for a situation that occurred last night in a Nashville Predators-Detroit Red Wings game uh, where his microphone was turned on and he was caught uh, talking about the fact that he wanted to call a penalty against the Predators and he admit, admitted that it was like a soft call, but he was still was kind of looking to make like a makeup call is what it sounded like. So obviously if you missed that, I will put the uh, link to the video here in the YouTube cards. Uh, we went into discuss that a little bit into more in depth, but crazy day with all people talking about that situation. The first time I can recall ever seeing a referee get in trouble like that. So certainly some very interesting news in that regard. Now in regards to the NHL waiver wire, yesterday we had Islanders forward Leo Komarov on waivers. He did indeed clear, so he's still a member of the Islanders and there was no more news about additional players being placed on the waiver wire today so we won't have any more news on that tomorrow unless we saw new players go on waivers at noon eastern time tomorrow as well now as i mentioned as well we do have some signings to discuss we have uh, three players that have signed contracts with their nhl clubs they're all coming into the nhl uh, we have uh, the edmonton oilers signing right shot defenseman prospect michael kesselring uh, who's played for the last few years at northeastern university he's a 21 year old six foot four defenseman so certainly great size he was a six round pick back in 2018 uh, he's now making the pro jump and they get him under contract here to his entry-level deal the philadelphia flyers have also signed max willman to a two-year two-way nhl contract a value at 750000 at the NHL level. And we also saw the New Jersey Devils make a signing. They've signed center iceman Tice Thompson to a two-year entry-level contract due to his age. Uh, he's also been playing college hockey for the past few years. And it was a fourth-round pick in 2019. A center iceman playing college hockey for the past three years at Providence College. Uh, and that contract is expected to kick in right away. He's uh, gone into his quarantine period and is expected to join the Devils before the remainder of the season, see how many games he can get in. So obviously that's a two-year entry-level deal. Uh, so after next year, he'll be a restricted free agent again. So obviously they're going to let him jump into the NHL action immediately. Now, as I mentioned, we have the latest NHL trade rumors, a combination of NHL insider trading on TSN from last night, and also some more tidbits from Elliot Friedman's latest 31 Thoughts blog. Now, I want to talk first about the Toronto Maple Leafs appear to be targeting Mikhail Granlin. According to Darren Dreger on Insider Trading on TSN, uh, he's indicated that based on his information and sources, it looks as though they've kind of zeroed in on Granlin as being their primary forward target. Of course, teams are going to end up having two, three, four, five guys that they're really interested in because you know, obviously they're going to have to negotiate with that team for a trade. Some teams that are look to be sellers right now could turn out to be not be sellers or you know maybe not make so many moves at the deadline if they get back in the playoff race so they need to have a variety of options but obviously you know you're going to have plans a b c and d so to speak so granlin appears to be uh what he called a really great fit and an affordable option for kyle dubas to acquire for the leafs somebody who can be a versatile forward he could be a top six he can be a top nine uh, depending on where you want to put him mikhail granlin is one of those versatile guys who's got a Pretty decent offensive background who should be able to fit in well with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, I'm not completely convinced they're not going to look at other options, but it makes sense here that he might be a little bit more affordable. He's a rental player, so long term, they don't have to restructure you know, the team in any way. They're not going to really have to make any additional uh, moves or you know, really decide how to handle things in the offseason. But you know, they've been looking at other guys. There was rumors they were also interested in Philip Forsberg of the Predators, but that's going to be a much bigger price tag because he comes with a little bit of term. Uh, there's also been linked to Ricard Raquel and Anaheim. Uh, they've been linked to Nick Foligno in Columbus. Uh, so it's difficult to say what happens, but it makes sense here that Grandland appears to be 
their primary target. I mean, they've made it known that they're willing to shop top some top prospects around. So I would think for a guy like Granlin, maybe a, a top prospect, maybe a second round pick. I'm not sure they'd have to give up a first. Uh, hard to say, but either way, like a high pick and, and a top prospect's probably what's going to get it done unless the Predators really want to have something that'll help them in a more immediate future, which we could see a guy like uh, Pierre Engvall or an Alex Kerfoot or something be traded the other way. So according to Dreger, Granlin is their guy they're zeroing in on. Now, in regards to Matthias Ekholm, who's getting a lot of buzz around the NHL, certainly a hot commodity. Uh, there's still a lot of talk that the Habs and Mark Bergevin are in on that, trying to see if they can acquire the veteran defenseman here to really solidify their top four ahead of the NHL playoffs. Like I said before, I can understand and see a situation where Bergevin would do this, given the fact that he's got all kinds of currency for trade when it comes to uh, all their draft picks they have. They have lots of great prospects. They could move something off of their roster to make the salary cap space, and a guy like Ekholm doesn't come with a huge price tag salary cap-wise, so it's not so difficult to squeeze it in. Now, obviously, it's been revealed through Pierre Lebrun on this insider trading segment that the asking price for Ekholm appears to be Three pieces. They appear to be looking for a first-round pick, a high-level prospect, so somebody who's you know more considered an elite-level A prospect, and a third piece as well because that home's coming with a little bit of term. Now, that third piece doesn't really specify what it was. I suppose it could be a roster player who could go there and help now, uh, probably, preferably somebody on the back end, or it could be maybe another draft pick or another prospect. But I would think most teams would probably prefer that third piece to be a roster player myself. Obviously, you know, in this case of Montreal, they do need to move somebody out who would be able to generate a little bit of a cap relief for them to kind of offset here. So in Montreal's case, if they were to continue exploring that, I can see a situation where they would trade their first round pick, whether it be 2021 or 2022. They've got a lot of youth in the organization already. They're well stocked in the prospect pool. So this is a time they could gamble with a first round pick, especially if Nashville's willing to accept a 2021 first rounder because... This draft is not as deep, so it's less likely, at least, no guarantees, of course, that they wouldn't get as a high-level pl a player. Uh, so that's certainly preferable, but it could be 22 that David Poyle insists on having. When it comes to top prospects, though, the Habs do have a good variety of them, so it's hard to say who that would be that they would really want. I mean, would the Habs consider moving Cole Caulfield? I mean, he's expected to sign a pro contract when his season is done uh, here in the coming weeks. Um, so would they consider that? Would it be maybe a Ryan Paling? Could they look to move Jordan Harris? I mean, Jordan Harris didn't end up signing with Montreal after all, who's a really solid D prospect, which I know a lot of people were somewhat convinced he would turn pro and make the jump here when his season ended, but he decided he's going back for his fourth and final year. So they very well could, you know, be at risk of maybe losing him. So, you know, could that be a player that they look to include as well? Um, so hard to say which route they take in that regard. Obviously, a guy like Victor Mete could be included as maybe the third piece as well. Uh, obviously, a player who's looking for a bigger opportunity, more ice time, uh, somebody who's having a hard time fitting into the Habs' long-term future plans and today's plans. So I could see being a case of a first-round pick, uh, you know, maybe a Victor Mete, Maybe a prospect uh, like the ones I mentioned, but that might not work cap-wise, so it might not be able to be Mete, I guess. It might have to be more a player like like a Paul Byron or a Lekanen or even an Armia. One of those guys would be the preferred guys to go, unless they decided that trading an, another defenseman would be the way to go, like a Ben Sherratt. But I would think they'd want to keep Sherratt and Ekholm and really have that solid top four. They'd be at risk for the expansion draft to lose one of them, but that's probably a situation they might be willing to deal with later. Um, hard to say, but I know that's that's one issue that the Habs would have if they got Ekholm would be expansion draft coverage and who do they protect. But if they view uh, Ekholm as being stronger than Sherratt, maybe Sherratt being, ends up being a guy that ends up getting exposed because you know Petrie and Weber are going to be covered for sure. So with all the talk of the Habs being in on Ekholm, does that price tag something that you're comfortable with as a Montreal fan? Give me your mock trades down in the comments and we can discuss further. Now, Elliot Friedman in his latest 31 Thoughts blog has also talked about the fact that maybe Ekholm's not the guy that goes. I mean, it is possible and more likely, I think, that he gets traded. Friedman believes there's a possibility they could end up keeping Ekholm and maybe trading Ryan Ellis instead because Ryan Ellis has a longer-term deal, uh, still a pretty valuable contract, and if teams are going to be looking to add long-term and have expansion draft implications, they might want a player they can keep much longer than just this year and next. And Ellis certainly fits that bill. He's a right shot, which is something a lot of teams covet. 
So it makes sense that he would certainly draw a lot of interest as well. Now, first announced earlier this season that things were looking like the Predators were going to become big time sellers due to the poor season they were having. Uh, Ryan Ellis was actually mentioned along with Roman Yossi as being a couple of the only players in that lineup that would be considered untouchable. So for him to include him now saying that he could be available for the right price, obviously something has changed internally. Maybe they're looking to, to see if they can do a bigger rebuild or reset than we might have originally thought. But difficult to say exactly. But obviously if we know the price tag on Eckholm, you know the price tag on Ellis is likely going to be a little bit more given the fact that he comes with more term uh, and somebody thinking they can have in their lineup much, much longer. Now, Friedman wonders if Ellis would be a great fit with the Flyers. He doesn't have any information there to suggest that they've had trade talks or anything like that. This is just him finding a good fit for Ellis. But he said, obviously, the Flyers are a team that's been rumored to be making a move, especially on the blue line. And obviously, he feels Ellis would be a great fit there, and I have to agree. Now, we know that top defenseman Ivan Provorov hasn't been quite the same this year. I know watching a few recent Flyers games when they've been struggling, it seems as though Provorov isn't quite the same guy he was in the past. Obviously, not having Matt Niskanen in there has created a big hole for them. Uh, Niskanen played a big role, paired with a lot with Provorov last year, and having his absence there has been difficult for them. They haven't really been able to find a way to replace it, and it's been a challenge. So, obviously, can you imagine Ryan Ellis fitting on that top pair with Ivan Provorov? I mean, that would be quite the dynamic duo, and I'm sure Flyers fans would love to hear the sound of that. Now, the Flyers are a team like Montreal that do have some interesting young players and some draft picks. They could possibly look to get put together a package to make that happen, especially if they were to move a guy like Shane Gossis Bear, uh, who obviously comes with over a $4 million cap hit. That's, you know, that doesn't leave a ton of difference there in money that would make sense that if Nashville took Gossis Bear, it wouldn't be that difficult for Philadelphia to squeeze him in the mix, and that would really change the whole dynamic on the Flyers' back end. I mean, the problem here with the Flyers, if you look at their recent loss and how they've been struggling, uh, they are a much better team with Provorov on the ice when he can do his offensive thing better and obviously not be so worried about playing on the defensive side of things. You need sometimes a guy like Provorov or look, look like a guy like Shabbat in Ottawa or any of the top defensemen that are out there that are kind of like rovers and are really solid offensively. They need that defensive pair guy who can really offset them and kind of level things out and you know you know that you have your own end taken care of and Ellis could certainly help balance Provorov out and he could certainly be much more dynamic and offensive for the 25 minutes or so a game that he normally plays so obviously that could have a big impact on the Flyers if they did make that deal so we'll see what happens like I said Friedman doesn't have any information here to suggest the Flyers are inquiring but it does make sense that it would be a good fit and it does make sense that the Predators might be willing to move Ellis over Ekholm given the fact they could get themselves an even bigger haul now, lastly here, I want to touch on Connor Garland, who obviously has been talked about in a variety of NHL circles lately in the rumor mill. Uh, he's been mentioned through Elliot Friedman's blog. He's been mentioned on Insider Trading that the Coyotes are pretty well open to do a lot of different things. Dreger went on to say on Insider Trading that it's not a complete fire sale by any means, but they're open to just about any player and possibly, you know, talk and trade and really shaking things up there. Obviously, the new GM is not looking to like, completely rebuild but he does want to have a different dynamic, change up the roster, and there's not really many players there that would be off-limits. So clearly a guy like Garland, who's been a top scorer for them, like I mentioned before, has been kind of flying under the radar in Arizona, could draw a good interest. Now, one team that Friedman links him to is the Boston Bruins. Clearly the Bruins have been looking for that right side of, of David Krejci uh, for a winger there for some time. They've had a hard time figuring it out. And Garland could be that guy who comes in at least on a short-term basis with a good contract that obviously they could extend for a pretty fair price. Um, that could very well be a great fit there. I mean, Connor Garland to Boston would be a sneaky great trade for the Bruins to really improve their secondary scoring. I mean, they've had their ups and downs with secondary scoring this year, uh, but to add a guy like Garland who's young enough who could certainly be there, you know, if they kept him long term, he could be there well beyond, like, you know, the, the Bergeron, Krejci, Marshawn years, because he's obviously much younger than them. Gives him that good secondary scoring role now. He can grow into a top line role down the road as those older guys kind of, you know, start to get to different points in their career towards the end. So it would be a great pickup to me for, for Boston. I mean, I'm not sure what they would have to give up to do it. Really, a first round pick could be in play um, and, and other, you know, potential prospects. I mean, they do have some guys that are on the way up, like a John 
Von Beecher that might become expendable. Hard to say exactly what the Coyotes would want for Garland, but I'm sure it's going to want at least a couple of solid pieces to restock their cupboards for the future. So we'll see, but let me know your thoughts on the possibility of Garland to Boston. Would that be a good pickup for them heading into the NHL trade deadline? Let me know your thoughts on everything discussed here today down in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Oh.